Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a random chit chatty video about makeup that I would repurchase if I lost my whole makeup collection. Um, this has actually been something that I, I actually fantasize about this. <laughs> um, you guys know I have been working on minimizing my makeup collection for years but in a mindful way so that I don't go back to, you know, excessively purchasing shit that I essentially don't need just because I love makeup. Um, so over the years I have been using up stuff, I have been buying a hell of a lot less, I have been mindfully decluttering and I, I feel really good about how far I've come, I've still got a long way to go. But the big thing that I wanted to change was my purchasing habits and I have achieved that and I feel really good about it. However, in saying that, I still fantasize about going to a makeup store and buying a full face of new makeup goodies. And I thought what I would do in this video is sit down and talk to you guys about the things that I would buy if I lost my whole makeup collection. If I just needed a full face of makeup, what would I go to the shops and purchase? So some basic rules that I set were, these should all be things that I know work for me and I know I enjoy them, which means they're all gonna be things that I currently own or have used in the past. And it has to be stuff that I can actually go to the shop and buy. I figured there's no point um, putting things on the list that I would have to purchase and have shipped to me because some places are taking weeks to actually get shit out to people. So this is kind of like an emergency situation. Go to the shops, buy a full face of makeup. What would I pick up? So I'm going to start with a primer. Now, I will be very clear about this because some of you will probably think primer wouldn't be on my list because I don't really use them. However, for those people who identify as having similar preferences to me or skin type to me, I figured I should chuck in a primer just in case you guys are interested in which one I would choose. But I probably wouldn't actually go out and buy one. Um, I would choose this guy. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is a beautiful hydrating primer, great for dry skin, really nice base. It's not like silicon heavy or anything like that, so you don't get that, like, ugh. I just I hate the way silicon feels on my skin. To me, it's like, it's almost greasy, but not. It's like, ugh, I, yuck, yuck. I don't like it. Uh, but this stuff I really do enjoy. You can use it as a moisturizer if you want as well and it smells divine yum 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 so for me that would just be like you know it's more of an e experience product like the experience of using it is pleasant and i get some minor skin improvement benefits with the hydration let's move on to foundation now this was actually a really hard one for me because most of my favorite foundations have been discontinued. Um, I was thinking, okay, it's got to be a Shuamura foundation. Uh, one that I particularly really, really would like to have again, which in saying that, I do actually have one in the drawer back here. I squirrel it away. Um, the Petal Skin Cushion Foundation. Love that stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. So good for dry skin. I would love to buy that. It's discontinued as far as I'm aware. Uh, I also really love the light bulb foundation from Shuamura. Also believe that that is discontinued. And in my search for uh, what Shuamura is currently stocking as a foundation, I discovered that I am not actually sure that Shuamura makeup is sold in Australia anymore. Uh, I know the hair products are but I was having great difficulty finding anywhere that stopped Shuamura makeup that wasn't, you know, kind of from like a discontinued um, store, basically. So that was interesting and I cried a little bit. Uh, another one that comes to mind for me that I feel I would really like to try again, 
it's been quite some years I remember loving it and I know I can go in store and find it is the Dior Air Flash foundation so I have tried that in the past I remember having a really nice experience with it at the time I did have oily skin so I'm not sure if it would still be all that great for me um, with like more normal to dry skin but that would probably be the one that I would go and pick up and recently I've been in store and I've seen it and I've been like oh, I want to buy that and try it again um, so that I think that would be the one that I would go for based on knowing what I know about the product and also being interested in trying it again. Concealer. Now this one was, it was a pretty easy pick for me. Um, I decided it would have to be the uh, Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. can pick this up at Priceline, super cheap. Um, I just know that this works so well for me. Another one that did come to mind, which I also own, is the Charlotte Tilbury um what's it called here she is the magic away liquid concealer so that's another one i would consider however i think the fit me would win because i know that the coverage is a little bit better so if i'm having you know like a breakout which excuse me i've had breakouts recently i think it was a new moisturizer i used i'm really upset about like i'm angry um <laughs> anyway i I would kind of want to have something in my arsenal that has the ability to pack a bit more of a punch if it needs coverage, whereas the Magic Away, this is really light coverage and great if my skin is perfect and fine, but it's skin, it's not always perfect and fine. Moving on to face powder. Now this one was actually kind of difficult for me to choose. I was thinking I want something that's pressed. I don't want a loose powder, I'm so over it. Um, I don't actually use a lot of powder anymore, Where and where I do use it, it's like under my eyes, maybe to like, you know, set across my nose or something like that. I use the tiniest amount. I want something that's really refined, um, doesn't look, you know, shit on the skin, isn't dehydrating, and the one that I went with was actually KVD. This is the Locket Blotting Powder. Um, I love this. I've hit pan on mine and I'm almost like, I don't know why, I was kind of like, oh no, don't finish that because you can't buy it again. But you can. It's still available. Um, I just, you know, there was drama with the brand and I mean, that's just showing how, how long I've had this product and I should really finish it, which I think I might try. Um, but this is probably what I would go and buy. It's just such a beautiful powder. Great for oily skin as well. It's called a blotting powder for a reason, but you can use this super lightly and it just locks in your foundation. So I think that is what I would run and pick up. Okay, bronzer. Now, bronzer is... Uh, it's an easy one, but also it's a difficult one. I think what I would buy is this guy. This is from NARS. It is the Sun Kiss Bronzing Cream. I have the shade Laguna. Um, however, I was also thinking the bronzer that I'm currently using, I just, I love it. I love it. And uh, I wish I'd got into it sooner. It's not even a, a, a bronzer. It's one of the ambient lighting powders from Hourglass and it's in the shade Dim. Now it's winter here in Australia and uh, it's cold as hell and I've lost all of my summer tan and this just works for me especially when I'm going for more of like a you know low makeup kind of vibe which is my day-to-day -day makeup um, and I'm loving it. So Theoretically, I would buy either of these, but depending on the time of year, I might go for this one over this one. Uh, this would be a good one for summer, or maybe I would just buy a lighter shade of this for the winter months. I don't know, but I like both of them, and uh, it's situations like this where I'm glad that I'm not losing my whole makeup collection and having to start again because I would feel like buying two bronzers at once would just be like a very bad decision to make when and we don't make bad purchasing decisions anymore. Okay, blush. Now, this was a hard one for me 
because at the moment I am loving liquid blushes and I'm not really familiar with any that are available at like Mecca or Sephora or other retailers in Australia at the moment. Most of the ones that I own I have purchased from overseas and you know we already had the rule no online purchasing got to be able to buy it in store. Now this one I did get online however I did my research um, I believe I could still pick this up in store in Australia. So this is the three concept eyes style Nanda blush cushion. I have the shade peach. This is beautiful. It's just a liquid cushion blush. I have been using this religiously lately except today because I'm testing out the uh, the new lethal blushes um, and I, I love this. I wish they had more colors though. Um, now Looking online, um, I know there used to be a three concept eye store at um, Melbourne Central. That is gone though. Uh, but there are a lot of like Asian beauty retailers in the city. I know there's one in Chadston. Um, there's a few out in Box Hill as well. So I think with a little bit of looking around I would be able to find one of these in store now if that fell through I don't know what I would do I would probably just go to Sephora and Mecca and I would just be looking at all of the cream and liquid blushes available and I'd be looking for something that has um, either a mauve like a mauve colored blush or um, a peach blush that isn't like a heavy uh, pink undertone. I'd be looking for a yellow undertone to work with my own undertones. My highlight choice was a no-brainer and super easy for me to decide on. This is NARS Fort de France. Now, if I could, I would try to find a mini of it. I would try to avoid buying um, any highlighters in a full-size pan because I know how long they take and I look there are some makeup items that I enjoy being in a long-term relationship with but for the most part I I don't like that because they go bad so <laughs> I would be looking for something mini but this is one of my absolute favorite highlighters I am wearing it today it is just divine like the glow that it gives is beautiful it suits my skin tone really well I just love this highlighter I think it's fantastic I believe this mini one I got in like a holiday pack um, so you know they they don't actually sell these as minis as far as I'm aware um, but it doesn't mean I wouldn't try and find it in a mini uh, yeah so that would be my highlighter of choice let's talk about brow products so when it comes to colored brow products I'd be looking for a micro pencil essentially I would skip the benefit ones, the Precisely My Brow, simply because I know they're quite expensive and it is a product that when you use it religiously you go through it fairly quickly. Now I would most likely head down to Priceline and uh, have a look at what's available. Otherwise I would consider the Mecca Brow Guru uh, Micromatic Pencils. I have two of them here so I have their um, uh, fair and what is it fair and medium there you go um, this is typically how I would actually do my brows as well I would use two colors to uh, create dimension and that is something that I also used to do with the Mac brow pencils in lingering and fling now I have fling here I probably actually do have some lingering back there um, Another option for picking up one of these but saving some money would be for me to go to the Estee Lauder, Estee Lauder corporate store in Melbourne. They typically have these available um, and you can get them a little bit cheaper than what you would in a Mac store which is fantastic. Um, so that's probably where I would go for coloured brow products if I didn't find something that I felt confident with at Priceline. Although, in saying that, I don't think I've tried a whole lot of drugstore micro brow pencils, so yeah, 
I think these guys would be the winner. As for a brow setting product, I would go straight to Benefit and I would not mind spending the money. I would get the 24 hour brow setter. I miss that product so badly. I have a whole bunch of brow setting products in uh, my drawers back here, but I still daydream about the Benefit one. And to be honest, it's probably going to be the first brow setting product I buy when I'm ready to buy a brow setting product. Um, I just, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I love the way that it held my brows in place uh, without making them crunchy or glossy or anything weird like that. So that would be the one that I would pick up if I didn't have any. Eye primer. Now, Initially on my list I had the MAC Painterly paint pot and then I was going through my drawers and umming and ahhing over, you know, what do I own and what do I love? And something that was, oh, I feel like I'd almost forgotten about it, I haven't used it in so long, this guy from Natasha Denona. This is the eyeshadow base and this surprised me. It is a beautiful, beautiful product. It's really thin, but it holds on to makeup really well. Well, eyeshadows. Um, I think this is where I would go. I think I'd pick one of these up. I'm pretty sure I can find them in Sephora. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I would get. I think the, the MAC Painterly Paint Pod, I really, really like that product. But again, that's something that you are just using for such a long, long time. Um, and for me personally, I have found that uh, they tend to dry out before I can finish them completely. At the moment, the one I have is almost done, um, and I know I'll get through it, and it's fine. You can make them work for quite a while just by, like, mixing them up or putting a little bit of Duraline in there to rehydrate them, but also this is easier. Okay, next up is eyeshadows and this one was really hard for me because there was literally only one thing that I was like, I know that that is a thing that I would want to buy and that would be one of NARS's eyeshadow palettes. Now, I'm not talking about anything that NARS has in their core collection. I'm not interested in any of that, not at all. Um, it's their limited edition palettes that I love. And I have quite a collection of them. Uh, they always grab my attention when they release one. And I'm rarely, rarely disappointed with buying one. Um, however, they don't always have a limited edition palette out. And sometimes they're not quite my cup of tea. There is one available now. And it's a bit too pink heavy for me. I just don't think it's my thing. So I wouldn't want to buy it. So I was thinking, okay, if I'm going to buy an eyeshadow palette, I wouldn't buy single eyeshadows because fuck that. Um, what would I buy? What, what would be something that I feel I would be happy to use on a regular basis? Now, there would definitely be days I would go without eyeshadow. Happily, I would just put on a bit of mascara and eyeliner and off I go. Um, but what I would be happy to use is potentially some little Charlotte Tilbury quads. Now, I might pick up one or two of them. There's actually two on my wish list, which I really like. I can't remember what they're called. This one here is the Vintage Vamp. Um, and I really love these little quads. This is a great one because it has two mattes and two like sparkly shimmer shades, or one's a satin, one's like a sparkly gold. Um, I would probably potentially pick up two of these guys. However, they are quite expensive. So there's that. Um, another thing that I thought, you know, I really love that palette. I've still got it. I've used it heavily and uh, I would probably be very happy to use it for quite some time. Soft Glam from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Now I can pick this up in, um, what's that shop called? Sephora. <laughs> Sephora stocks these. Um, you can get them from uh, Mecca online as well. And Mecca's online shipping is like, it's good. So I, I wouldn't have an issue, you know, getting my hands on one of these. Um, this is kind of me to a T in an eyeshadow palette. Boring, basic and sparkly. Uh, that's what I like. Um, I wouldn't be buying anything colourful. I just don't care for it. I'd be looking for, you know wearable everyday mattes and sparkly eyeshadows because that's what I gravitate towards. And then 
when NARS finally releases a limited edition palette that I love. Usually they pop up around the holiday season. I would buy one of them as well. Eyeliners. So let's talk about pencil eyeliners first. I would pick up either one of these, whatever, whatever's available. Um, I have NARS Via Veneto here and I have the highliner from Marc Jacobs in Blacker. These are the two formulas for me that just work. They stay put, they don't smudge or bleed throughout the day. Um, if I want to remove it, I have to actually physically remove it. Um, it doesn't just sort of disappear into my waterline or anything like that. So these are kind of my holy grail um, pencil eyeliners and I don't stray away from them. I don't buy anything else because I'm not interested. I feel like once you find a product like this that works for you, you just kind of keep going back to it. So they're the pencil eyeliners I would choose. When it comes to um, pen eyeliners, the one that I would really want, like really, really want is from Hindash. It's the Hero line. Um, I have been using one of these for ages. I have another one here. It is fantastic. Just beautiful, beautiful pen liner. Um, and the it has a brush tip, which is my favorite type of pen liner. I feel like you get, um, you just get a better application with a pen over a felt tip, in my opinion. Um, so that is what I would want. However, you can't buy these in store in Australia. You have to get them shipped to you. So to get past that issue, I would pick up one of these. It is the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Wing Liner. I would probably buy one of these and then I would order like three of these. Because <laughs> by the time this is finished, these would have arrived um, and I, I would be happy. This is a fantastic drugstore pen liner. Um, again, it has the brush tip. I personally feel that I get better longevity out of this guy than I do this guy though. So, you know, there's that. But this one is kind of old reliable for me. I've gone through many of them throughout the years and, you know, I keep a backup. So that says a lot. Okay, mascara. This one was also a little bit of like a no-brainer for me um, and it's based off a mascara that I literally just finished. It was a mini of the Hourgla Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. I love this stuff. I love it. I just, mm, I love it. At the moment I'm using the um, Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and I don't mind it but I don't love it. I don't love it like I love this stuff. It's fantastic. Um, I am just going to try and work on a few more of my mini mascaras and then I'm probably going to crack this open because this mascara is a fave and I find every time I go back to using this mascara, I'm just like, I love you. I love you so much. You are fantastic. Um, this is one I would just go and buy because I know it's easy, like, easy for me to pick up in a Mecca store. Um, sure, it's expensive, but also my lashes are worth it. So what else? Lip liner. Now this one was hard for me because the lip liner that I'm in love with at the moment is actually from Colourpop. It is um, in the shade O Snap. And you guys know shipping from Colourpop to Australia takes fucking 40 years. And also you know, you've got to buy a certain amount of shit to reach shipping cap. No, not happening. Now, in terms of a lip liner that I can buy in store and I know that I really, really like and I know they have a colour I love is from Natasha Denona. These are the I Need a Nude Lip Crayons. This one is Noah. Um, I actually have two of them and I would say that these are actually quite similar to the Colourpop formula except their longevity is better but the smooth highly pigmented uh, formula is very similar to the Colourpop ones. Um, so I think this is where I would go if I wanted to buy a lip liner um, and I think it would actually be something that was kind of top of my list because sometimes I love to just chuck on a lip liner and then a little bit of um, like lip balm over the top or a lip gloss or something like that. So Natasha Denona, 
she wins another spot in things I would buy. Okay, let's talk about lipsticks. Can you guess what it would be? Can you? Can you? If you guessed Hourglass, you would be correct. These are the Confession Ultra Slim Lipsticks. Um, I'm wearing one of these today, but I can't remember which shade I put on. Um, I've got One Day. These are both nudes. Both of my nude shades. Um, I do have some more nudes, but these were just two that I pulled out. Um, I've got One Day here, and I've got I've Never. I think I'm wearing I've Never. Yeah. Um, these are beautiful. I just love... I love that they're little. To be honest, these are super expensive. Um, they're bougie as fuck. I mean, the packaging is awesome. Um, but also, it's the kind of thing, it's not going to take me 500 years to go through it if I only have one. Um, and they're comfortable. I like the formula. They make me happy. You guys know I own an absolute boatload of these because... <laughs> they're just they're awesome I love them um I would also look at buying like maybe a tinted balm um something from YSL would be um on my list that's something I, I purchased recently and I love um Tarte also do some really beautiful um like sheer hydrating lip tint products um I'd consider something like that as well I would probably buy a traditional lipstick and then like a sheer tinted product um, maybe even the uh Clar Clarins instant light lip perfectors um they're a, a favorite at the moment so there's quite a few lip products that I would be interested in buying I wouldn't have an issue picking something up in store my issue would be um, making sure I only buy one of each type of product rather than multiple. And the last category would be a face mist. And I would pick one up even though I'm not using them too much at the moment. The one I would go for is a Glow Recipe Watermelon um, Glow Mist because when my skin is really dry, that product can be a lifesaver. Um, sort of layering it in between layers of makeup really helps my skin um, and if I am going for that nice hydrated dewy look I can get that uh, simply by finishing my my makeup with it so that would be the one that I would choose um, and also the scent I love the scent it's just it's a fave all right guys so that's it they are the products I would purchase if I lost my whole makeup collection and had to start again feel free to let me know what you guys would pick up would you pick up things that are tried and true and you know you already love or would you be tempted to go out and buy like a full face of makeup that you'd never tried before that did cross my mind and I was like oh tempting um but also I didn't want to write out that list and then be tempted to buy it because you know <laughs> that that can happen sometimes you have to be able to recognize when you're about to walk into the lion's den and just not do it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will catch you in the next one bye